Hey everybody, I'm going to show you how to export your compositions as QuickTime movies so that you can edit them together in Final Cut. Now the first thing I want, to, want you guys to be aware of is that After Effects is not an editing software. Don't try to do your editing in here. It's very inefficient at that. It's not really good at it. And don't do audio in here. What it is designed for is creating shots. So you have to think of this as, as you know, shot creation tool. Here we have one shot, which is the master profile. It's a wide shot of a character walking in profile down a street. And we have another composition. Same character, but we're in a medium frontal of the same character walking down the street. And these two shots will end up editing together very nicely because it mirrors something that you might do in a live action. You, a lot of times you'll shoot something establishing shot and then you cut into close-ups or mediums of the characters. Maybe there's two characters here talking, having a more intimate conversation. And this is kind of basic, you know, filmmaking 101. And that's what we've made here. Now what we need to do is export this composition as a QuickTime movie so that we can edit it in Final Cut. Remember to trim your work area so that you're not editing stuff or rendering stuff that you don't need. Trim your work area down to a, the area that you think you're going to use. Give yourself a little bit of extra room because you may change your mind on editing. Don't make it like super precise, but you know, make sure you're just getting the stuff that you need. Highlight the composition, go to the composition column and say add to render queue. When you add it to the render queue, you'll see there's the footage, the compositions here, and it has some options that we're going to look at in a second. It also has the render button. Don't just go, oh great, it's in the render queue and render it because you need to look at this one right here, lossless, and you're going to need to change this. The lossless output module is one that is great if you're working on a feature film. It's going to create the super pristine footage, but it's really huge file format and it'll take up a lot of disk space and it probably won't even play back in real time on some of the computers that you're using. So you want to change the output module. So click on the word lossless. Format is QuickTime. That's almost irrelevant. Almost all the video you use is a QuickTime of some kind. You need to know what kind of uh, format it is, what kind of you know option you're going to be using for the format. And this, this is actually called the codec. It's the compressor decompressor, and it's using the animation compressor. That's what this lossless one means. This doesn't mean like, oh, he's doing animation. It's just a name by coincidence of a video codec, and we're going to change that because we want to use one that's a lot easier for us to use in Final Cut. So hit Format option. You'll see video codec that's currently being used as the animation. We're going to change that. Open that up, and you'll see like these are all codecs that you could be using. You see that there's tons of them. And you're hardly ever going to use all these. There's some that you might use, like H.264, if you're doing video for the Internet. But in this case, we're going to use Apple ProRes 422. Click on that, hit OK, hit OK, and you'll see it says Custom QuickTime. That means it's using a custom QuickTime codec, and the one that we're using is the ProRes. And then you also need to click on the Output 2. So click on the name of your file and tell it where you want the file to be exported to. You need to know where your files are going. So here I have a UCLA tutorial folder. I'll click on that one and say save. It's going to export it to that folder. Don't worry about best settings for right now. It's not important. This is all set up and ready to render. But before I do that, I'm going to go to my other composition and add it to the render to, uh, queue as well. So we add that to the render queue. Again, we have to change this. We click on the word lossless. We go to Format Options. And we change it to ProRes 422. Now you're ready to render. Do this before you render. Save your project. Now hit Render. And you'll see it's going to render now. And the gold line runs through here. It gives you an estimate. I'm on a very fast computer, so this thing moves pretty quickly. It may, it might not be unusual for this to say 
10, 12, 15, 20, 30 minutes, something like that, depending on the computer. If you have the option, use the silver computers in the lab because they're faster computers and the render time will be faster. And now you're going to see that it'll go and it'll render the other shot. And you guys all know how to use Final Cut, but I'll just walk you through this anyway. Um, we're going to go find our footage, which was in this one here. It's this version. And this one. Now, when you're in Final Cut, you're going to have a sequence open. And if you drag your first composition, your first export, to the timeline, it's going to say this clip doesn't match the sequence settings. Um, that's because the sequence that this has preset for isn't a ProRes sequence. And it's going to ask you, do you want to match this? Say yes to that. Because what will happen now is that this footage will just play back normally without having to do any pre-renders or anything. And any other footage that's in the same format can be dropped into the timeline without it being rendered. So now we can start doing our editing. So in this case, we may, if we wanted to do our establishing shot, there's our character walking, and then maybe we want to cut to medium and walking, and we can, I don't really have enough footage in here to do everything, but we could, you could cut back to him walk, keeping on walking maybe a little bit later in that shot. So. Now you see we take in the same footage and made two edit, three edits out of it. He walk, says something, and then he keeps walking. Now the last thing you need to do is add some audio to that. I've got a song here. I'll drop that into the timeline. So it needs to be rendered. So highlight it, go to sequence, render selection. Uh, right now it's just telling me I haven't saved my project. I'm going to ignore that. And now we've rendered the audio. 